Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I want to talk about how you can safely use Keep Alive's, Stay Alive's, whatever you want to call them, with Loke Sound decoders. So stick around for the video and we'll get started in a minute. Okay, so you've got a brand new uh, Loke Sound decoder of some kind, and you want to install it in your locomotive, and you think you need a Keep Alive or a Stay Alive, whichever you want to call it, if you're using a Loke Sound when it's a power pack. But, you know, there are safe ways to do it, and there are unsafe ways to do it. And they're getting very, very sensitive at, at Loke Sound de uh, these days about replacing um, uh, decoders that have been blown because people uh, have improperly installed uh, Keep Alive's in them. About two and a half years or so ago, uh, I was looking at videos on YouTube and I ran across one on installing one of the new uh, TCS KA1 Keep Alive's uh, along with a uh, Loke Sound decoder. And not long after that, I was talking to Matt Herman, uh, who runs uh, Loke Sound USA, and I mentioned that to Matt. And he told me, please, please do not uh, tell people about that video. You know, we've been having terrible problems with a lot of decoders coming in for warranty repair and replacement because people have uh, done just that. They've used a KA1 or other Keep Alive, Stay Alive device with a Loke Sound decoder and they've burned it up. And, you know, you know, we just prefer people not even consider doing that because it violates the warranty. Yeah, if you read the fine print on the warranty, uh, it does say that in cases of conversions of ESU products with parts not approved by the manufacturer, it violates the warranty. So you run the risk of losing your warranty coverage if you use a non-ESU product. So that's the first thing to be aware of. So, you know, that prompted me to ask some questions of them as to just what it was that was causing the problem. And in discussing this with Alec Herman, who is Matt's brother and takes care of tech support for the company, uh, he told me that what they were seeing was that, you know, yes, you could probably get away with it without any problems in normal operations. The problems start when you get around to programming the decoder. And if you're only programming one or two CVs, say the address, the short address and, you know, the uh, momentum and, and the values for uh, uh, CVs two, five, and six for the three-point speed curves, things like that that only involve changing one CV at a time, you probably won't get into problems. What happens, though, is when you start doing programming that involves a burst of, of programming steps, particularly with like indexed CVs, where you have to use several different CVs just to get to the, uh, to the one that you want to change. So you're in a burst, you're changing, you know, maybe two or three CVs at a time. That can cause uh, the, uh, a blown decoder. If you do something like in Decoder Pro, and you write a whole page of, of changes uh, um, at a time, that can, can blow the decoder. And uh, it's just not a good idea to do that. Now, what he told me was that if people insist on doing it and want to take the chance to use a non-ESU uh, Keep Alive with their decoders, that the best thing they can do is remove the decoder whenever they're going to do any programming. And one thing you can do is use one of these. It's a, a TCS uh, four pin uh, harness, you call it, wiring harness. And so that allows you to disconnect and remove the decoder whenever you need to do programming. Another thing you could do is use a little micro switch like this one here. I don't know, hopefully you can see that. It's just a simple little slide switch. You know, and you can install that in, in, in uh, obscure places uh, underneath of the tender of a steam locomotive or, you know, in the rear end of an F unit or, you know, underneath of a diesel of some kind. There's got to be places where you can stick one of these. And then just by a simple slide switch mechanism, you can turn that Keep Alive off. And that's the only safe way to use a non-ESU 
uh, keep alive like this KA1 with a low sound decoder. Now, that said, lots of people are doing it. You're going to hear everybody say, oh, I get away with it all the time. Well, yes, but that's probably 95% of the time. What about the other 5% when, you know, the decoder has to go into low sound for replacement? That's when you're going to run into problems. And you have to decide up front whether you want to go through that hassle of, you know, if it's, is it worth it to you? Because the uh, power pack keep alive or stay alive that ESU makes, and they're, you know, reasonably comparable in size to the KA1. You know, this one costs 26 bucks. This one costs $39. So you have to decide whether or not, you know, it's worth it, uh, 12 $13, uh, to use the, the smaller KA1 or the, the KA1 deco, uh, Keep Alive instead of the ESU Power Pack. You know, it's a, a straightforward decision in your mind that you have to make as to whether or not you want to do that. Now, the other side of this is whether or not you even need a Keep Alive, okay? In a lot of cases, you don't. Now, on my, uh, on the Piedmont Southern, all of my turnouts, the frogs in all of my turnouts, are powered. So I don't have any problems with locomotives stalling on uh, dead frogs. I also keep the tracks fairly clean, and I regularly clean the wheels on my locomotives. Plus, it's primarily a diesel fleet, and so I don't have problems. So in most cases, I honestly, even though I have shown you guys how to make various kinds of keep alives, I rarely use them myself. I just don't find them uh, that important. Now, if you have a layout where you've used insole frog turnouts or you haven't power routed your frogs and they're dead, then that's a case where installing uh, keep alives and similar devices in your locomotives may be an important factor for you. For me, it's not. Now, even I also have a, a number of steam locomotives, but they're big steam locomotives. You know, I have in and several NNW uh, 484s. I have, you know, a Challenger uh, locomotive, which is a big articulated thing, and several others. And I have found that, you know, they just don't require because I get pickup from the drivers as well as from the uh, wheels on the tenders. So I don't need it on those steam locomotives. The places where I have used uh, Keep Alive's a lot, and that's particularly these little uh, KA1s from TCS, and I've shown you this before. I did a video on installing DCC sound in a uh, Bachman uh, 060 uh, Pannier tank locomotive, and I use that in all of those small British uh, locomotives like that because most of them do not have flywheels. So they they can very quickly be stopped dead by, you know, a de uh, an uneven spot uh, going over a frog or over uh, a set of points. So those are some of the cases where you might want to use them. But for most, uh, for most of what I do, I, like I said, even my small diesel switchers, I have a low sound, I have low sound micro decoders in my little uh, NW2 switcher, also in the uh, Alco S2 that I, I recently did. I did not install a Keep Alive, and they run fine on my layout. Uh, whether or not they'll run fine on yours, you know, that's up to you to do the test up front and decide whether you really need them. Okay. Enough of the talk. Let's go ahead. I'm going to zoom in down here onto the workbench and we'll take a look at some of the ways that you can add Keep Alive's to low sound decoders. And by Keep Alive's, I'm talking primarily about the power packs. Okay, so here are, are a selection of low sound 5 decoders. Uh, well, this is actually a low sound 4 here. And I also have um, the, the uh, original power pack, and you can see that's. Uh, I'll show you that in relation to a, uh, a KA-1. So it's a, a pretty good sized device. And as you can see on the back, it has some very complicated electronic circuitry. And the same thing with this little guy, it's got a single capacitor. So it has quite a bit of uh, circuitry here on the back, simply because it's only working with one capacitor. And the assumption that we may have made about this is that they are, you know, using this circuitry to take the one farad uh, rating here and boost the uh, voltage enough to run your locomotive. Now the difference between a, um, a KA1 
and most other uh, Keep Alive devices is these only have two wires, the blue positive and the black or black-white negative. If you look at theirs, they have a red positive, a black negative, and a white wire here that they call the charge wire. What this white wire does, I've been told, is it turns the uh, Keep Alive device off when uh, you start doing programming so that it's safe to go ahead and do that. And, and that's why these work and these don't work safely. Okay, so then how do you hook these little guys up? Okay, so let's take a close look then at this version 4 uh, micro and uh, decoder from Loke Sound. And I'll show you that here on the back side of it, we've got the top side here with the wire connections. And then on the underside or the back side, we have these three little solder pads here in a row. And this first one here is your, uh, your ground connection, right here. And then, right here, we skip one, and this is the white or charge connection. And then you have to flip it over to the other side for the blue uh, positive connection. You can see the blue wire right here. So you can see that this is going to require some very, very delicate uh, soldering here. And this is where you run the risk of blowing your decoder simply by installing this guy because, you know, you have to have some very, very steady hands to install these things. Okay, so that's the Micro, and that's the version 4 Micro. If we then look at, I'm going to move this out of the way so I don't knock it over uh, onto the floor. If we look then at a 21-pin uh, decoder, and that's this guy right here, if I can get it in the video. Okay, if we look at this side, of the 21-pin uh, decoder, and, and this is where the raised portion of the socket is, you can see this row of gold contacts, okay? Now what those are is shown in the diagram that comes with your decoder. Um, and I'm going to have to flip it this way because this is the orientation once you do it. Uh, you can see that we have the positive is here, and then the white charge and then the black ground wire. So those three right in a row. And this is, you know, it's not all that small. You could solder your wires to that fairly easily by simply pre-tinning these and then just touching a, a fine pencil tip soldering iron to them. So that's how you would go about installing this guy to it. Now if you insist on using one of these, then you would attach the black wire here and the blue wire here, okay? because this is positive, this is negative, okay? And then the middle one, you don't have that white wire to attach, okay? So, that's how you would go about attaching this guy. Um, now, when it comes to our friend here, the direct board, things are a little bit more complicated because, um, as you can see, there's not a lot of extra contacts on here. A U plus or a positive connection right here. But the rest of them are on the bottom of this little removable Next18 decoder. Okay, so that plugs in. And this is what is called a Next18 decoder. And these are being used a lot in Europe now. And uh, I suspect we'll be seeing them sometime fairly soon because some manufacturers are starting to produce these kind of guys. And it's very easy to just plug those in. Now, how do you make a connection to those for your keep alive? Well, I'm going to flip it over and right here show you on the instructions. It shows you we've got the three wires coming from the power pack going right here to these three gold contacts. So you've got your negative, your white, and your positive right here. So you would have to solder to these three little guys here. Let me, let me zoom in just a little bit closer because that's very, very small. So you can see how small these are. And it's the red, the white, and the black. And then you got to make sure that you don't get so much solder on there that you can't plug this little guy back in here. Like that. Uh, another option that we have, and I've showed you the uh, decoder buddy before, uh, you can use you know, your 21-pin decoder with your uh, decoder buddies, and they just slide right onto the socket there or onto the pins. And on these, 
This is the, vo the early version of the decoder buddy. And right here, there is a positive and a negative contact. You can see right here on this one, uh, it shows, comes here, this is the version five, you've got your positive connection here and your ground here. So very quickly, you could make that connection right there and you'd be good to go with a KA1, okay? Now, to use one of these, the red wire, as I've said, is your positive, and that's one of the conventions in electronics. Red is positive, black is negative, okay? So we could just solder on the decoder buddy right here to red to plus and black to ground. And then what do you do with that white wire? Well, there are two choices depending on these two different types of circuit boards that you might be using. And I have a, uh, a printout that Nick sent me, Nick Santo from Nick's Trains. So here on the uh, version 5, you have your red and your black contacts here like I just showed you. And then the white wire goes to pin 3, right here. And on the earlier version, red, black here, and the white wire would go to pin 1. And then there's some programming instructions that I would have to give to you. So, you know, if you're planning on using a 21MTC with a decoder buddy, uh, you'll need to contact me, and I will be happy to email you a PDF copy of Nick's instructions on how to connect Keep Alive's to these, uh, or in power packs anyway, to these various decoder buddies. So if you want that, go to my website, www.dccguide.com, and there is, on the menu bar, there is a Contact Me selection. And you can click on that Contact Me and, and ask me to send you a copy of this uh, sheet on the Power Pack. Excuse me. On how to install the uh, Power Packs uh, with a decoder buddy. And I will be happy to email you a copy of the PDF uh, detailing just how to do that. So... I think that's everything. I think we've covered, you know, how to make these various connections, uh, what these various wires on uh, the three wires on the uh, power packs are, and, you know, how they translate into the blue and black NMRA uh, design requirements uh, or standards in RPs. So basically then, keep in mind, red is positive, black is negative, white is charge. On these guys, blue is positive, black is negative or in this case, black and white, is negative, and you don't have the charge. And remember, if you end up using one of these or any other type of non-ESU keep alive or stay alive, you have to remove this, disconnect it, switch it off, do something when you're doing programming, or you run the risk of letting this magic smoke out of your expensive low sound decoders. Another thing that I want to point out and I'll show you it here on my iPad. Um, if you go to the Loke Sound website, you can download a copy, a full copy, of their 112-page uh, Loke Sound decoder manual. And I highly recommend that you do that because there's a lot of good stuff in there. A lot of warnings, too. Now, one thing they do show on page 43, they show you how to install Keep Alive's that you can make and you can see these are very similar to the Keep Alive's that I've shown how to build previously here on the channel, okay? They're using a 2200 microfarad 25 volter with a uh, diode and a resistor, just like the ones that I've used for lighting Keep Alive's in uh, cabooses and passenger cars, as well as the Keep Alive design that I showed you how to build using three volt uh, capacitors to get 12 or 15 or whatever combination you want. But at any rate, they show you how to install these. They also show you here, again, the wiring for their Loke Sound decoders. Now, the thing that you have to remember here is these, again, only use the two-wire design. They don't have the three wires. So, they don't specify in here whether you should remove these when you're programming. I assume that the same problem could it could happen with these as can happen with a TCS KA1 or any other Keep Alive that is a two-wire design. But at any rate, they show you how to do this. 
They, sh they give you the instructions for it. So please take the time to download this and read this before you start uh, doing any fancy work with Keep Alive's and Loke Sound decoders. Okay, so that's a wrap up for today. Uh, I hope that gives you some ideas on how you can go about safely using Stay Alive's and Keep Alive's with your Loke Sound decoders. So, you know, it's not rocket science, but it does take a little bit of finesse with a soldering iron to install these suckers. And, you know, there are circumstances where you might not even need one. So give that some thought as well. Uh, have a great week, and we'll see you on Friday. And like I said, uh, hopefully I'll be able to start on building the baseboard for the new uh, switching and shunting layout that we're going to be building here over the next maybe year from now. Who knows? Take it easy, have a great uh, week, and be safe.